Uh, Euclid's Elements begins with a construction. If you're given a line segment, how to make an equilateral triangle that has A and B as two of its vertices. And the method is to first make a circle with center A and radius B, and then make a circle with center B and radius A. And this point C. So when I connect these, it's an equilateral triangle because in circle A, these are two radii, so they're equal. But in circle B, AB and BC are two radii, so they're equal, and therefore all three are equal. The second proposition in Euclid's elements is to copy a line segment. So here I have line segment BC. I want to make another line segment, same length, um, that's got point A as one of its endpoints. And the, the first step is actually to use the first construction to make this equilateral triangle. The second step, I'll just call this D, the second step is to extend these line segments. The third step is to make a circle with center B that has radius, uh, radius BC. So here's this. Uh, keep in mind here that this line segment then is equal to this line segment. This is the goal to get something that's this, this length that goes through points A. Um, this, we'll call that B, G. And there's only one more step. This one is to make a, um, a circle whose center is up here at D, and it goes through that point G also. So it's going to be a large sort of circle here. And I'll call this endpoint L, or, or the, where the circle intersects here. So, do some color here. DG is definitely the same length as, as DL, but DB here is the same thing as DA here. So, if we subtract from DG, DB, we end. Uh, dg minus db, we end up with this thing. And if we subtract dl minus da, we end up with this thing. So those two things are congruent. But this bg was congruent to this guy. They were part of the same circle before. So we have accomplished the goal of creating a line segment that has uh, a as an endpoint that has the same length as the original bc. Making a midpoint and really an entire perpendicular bisector of a line segment can be accomplished by making a circle, center A goes through B, a circle, center B goes through A, and essentially we have these two equilateral triangles. When you connect those two vertices, you will get a perpendicular bisector. And to prove that that is the case, even though my picture is not that accurate, if I draw in these four lines, what we see is that all four of these line segments are congruent. Now, this obtuse triangle here is congruent to this obtuse triangle here by side, side, side. They each, they, this, this side in the middle is shared by both. So once those are proved to be congruent, that would mean that this angle and this angle have to be equal by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And then we can say that these uh, that this triangle is congruent to this triangle because we have a side, the angle we just got, and this shared side in the middle here. And once those two triangles are congruent, we could say that these two sides are equal, which makes it the midpoint. All also, these two angles have to be equal, and since they add up to 180, they have to be 90 degrees. So it's not just this line is the perpendicular bisector. And that's a construction for finding the, the midpoint. It also works, actually, if you had to find, um, if there's a point here, it's not on the line, and you wanted to find a line perpendicular to, the, to that line through that point, you just make a circle of any radius that hits this line twice, and then do the perpendicular bisector of that line, and you'll get 
a line perpendicular to the line through that other uh, point. Copying an angle, so here's an angle, and here's a, I want to make a copy of it over here. Uh, the first step is to make a circle of any size, and then make that same circle over here, same, same radius. Whoops, don't have that guy yet. Now, you lift the compass and you make another circle with this is this this guy as the center. And you don't have to make an entire circle, just make a little arc that goes through this point also. Then you lift the compass, come here, and make that same arc. Now, that means that this line segment is the same length as this line segment. And when I connect to here, this is a radius of the circle. So what we have here are these two isosceles triangles that are congruent by SSS. And that means that this angle and this angle are congruent. Euclid's fifth postulate says that there's, or one variation of it, is that there's, a, there's only one line parallel to this green line through that black point. And the way we can find it is start by just making any slanted line here at any angle that you want. And then do the process of copying this angle here. And we copy it um, over there. And when we connect the dots, we will have copied this angle over here. But there's a rule where if the alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. So since I made these alternate interior angles congruent, these lines will then be parallel. And that's how you can make parallel line. If two parallelograms have the same base, so here's a, here's a parallelogram. It's got this base here, and it's got this height here. If I make another parallelogram that has the same base, just kind of make it go out at an angle. This new parallelogram will have the same area as the original one because it's got the same base, literally, and its height is equivalent because it's between the height of this guy is the height of a parallelogram is sort of the distance between the two parallel lines. So both of these heights are equivalent, so the bases and heights are equal, therefore the parallelograms have the same uh, have the same area. If instead of doing a parallelogram, I have a parallelogram, and instead I make this any point on this top parallel line, and I make a triangle, that triangle's area will be one half the area of the parallelogram, because the bases are the same, the heights are the same, but the triangle is one half base times height. We can use this to make if I have a parallelogram. Here's my parallelogram. Sorry. If instead I have a triangle and I have an angle here and my goal is to make a parallelogram that's got the same area as this triangle but also has this angle in it. So the trick is to copy this angle to the midpoint of this base of the triangle. And wherever that angle bisector hits this parallel, this uh, line parallel to the base, go from the other ver the vertex of the triangle and make the whole parallelogram. So this parallelogram has half the base of the triangle and has the same height, and therefore the parallelogram has the same area as the triangle, and it also has the angle that was required. If I take a parallelogram and I make a diagonal, and I pick any point on that diagonal, and I make a line parallel to the base, mm -hmm. to this to the space, and another line parallel to the to the other sides. I separate this thing into one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, four triangles, and two parallelograms. These parallelograms are not congruent, but they do have the same area, and that's because these two triangles are actually congruent by side, side, side. And these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And these large triangles are congruent by side, side, side. If you subtract away the red and the green from the yellow, 
uh, you end up with these two parallelograms, but they look like they're, they could be congruent, but generally they are just same area. If I have a random triangle here, and I have a random line segment here, and a random angle here, it's possible to create a parallelogram that has the same area as this triangle, that has this angle as one of its angles, and has this side as one of its sides. And the way we do that is we take the midpoint of the triangle base, we copy this angle until it hits the parallel, we make the whole parallelogram. So this parallelogram satisfies two of the conditions. It has this angle, and it has the proper area, but it does not have this side in it. So the trick is to copy this side, sort of extend this, so that that's the same length there. And then make a line parallel to this top line. Extend this. And here comes the important line, this diagonal. Goes through here, and keeps going. I can draw it that way. Well, imagine it hits here. Then I make another parallel line to, to this one. Extend this. And what I have here is this parallelogram has the same area as this parallelogram. Remember, this parallelogram here had the same area as the triangle, so that's good. This parallelogram also has this side as one of its sides, and since this angle is equal to this angle, um, those angles are not quite corresponding. This angle is congruent to this one because these are corresponding angles, and this one's congruent to that one. So this parallelogram has everything. It has the side, it has the angle here, and it has the proper area.